Well, now I'm joined by Sheila Black. She's a medical technologist with Advent Health in Orlando. Hi, Sheila. Hi, Robert. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you also. Now, I've been in the clinical laboratory field for 35 odd years, but you have experienced something unique that most med techs never experience is you have seen the Galeria Fowleri in the lab. I have, yes. Yeah. So can you talk a little bit about that experience back in 2016? Yes, it was. Please. Yeah. Uh, it was an afternoon in the laboratory, a normal day, and we received a spinal fluid from the emergency room to take a look at. And I sat down and did a cell count, which is something normal that we do, looking for red cells and white cells. And um, something struck me once I saw the patient's uh, history that this was a 16-year-old male in our emergency room with a headache. Um, so I sat down again to look at the, the grid and um, there were a few more white cells than normal and a few red cells. But I decided I was going to take a little longer look at this to look to see if the Nicolaria or amoeba was a possibility. And honestly, the first thing I looked at when I looked back under that grid in the microscope was movement. Hmm. And the hair on the back of my neck stood up, and I called two coworkers to come confirm. And really, before they sat down, I was already on the phone with the emergency room physician, and I told them that I thought we had an amoeba case. And that's interesting because, you know, calling a stat result to the emergency room, that's always a big deal. Right. Um, tell me about that call. Well, when I spoke to uh, the physician there, I, I don't think he believed me because I'm not <laughs> sure if I believe myself either because uh, this is not a conversation that you normally have, and right. especially speaking directly to the physician. We give critical values to the nurses, but this was something that the nurse handed off immediately to the doctor. Mm -hmm. And I, I said to him, I think we have an amoeba, and I immediately followed that up with, has there been water exposure? And that wasn't something that I would normally ask or even think about, but I had been to the amoeba summit back in 2016. And that was really something that I brought back to, with me, and it really made a difference, I think. And at that point in time, we really didn't know if the patient had had water exposure. They had to go back to the family and ask, ask that question, and uh, sure enough, that patient had been swimming in a lake where he had been a camp counselor mm -hmm. for the summer. Now, in the typical hospital laboratory, what, what are the methodologies that are available to laboratory personnel for this amoeba? Well, laboratories, or especially large laboratories, have available to them all sorts of automation, but you know, sometimes the old ways are the best ways. So for something where you're looking for amoeba, it's really important to do manual methods because you want to find the uh, telltale movement of the amoeba under the microscope when you actually put a drop of that spinal fluid on a glass slide. And that happens to be the gold standard for diagnosing in a clinical laboratory the presence of amoeba is looking for that movement. But that's not always there, and sometimes these organisms are very rare. So we use something called a cytospin, which is just a modified centrifuge, and it allows you to actually take a drop of that sample and put it on a slide, and it creates a monolayer of cells um, and organisms if they happen, happen to be there. And when you stain that slide with a right stain that we use in hematology for performing cell differentials, they become really brilliant and you really stand out if they're there. Yeah, uh, let me go ahead and close with this because you have this vast, vast expertise as compared to the rest of us. What things should laboratorians keep in mind when receiving a CSF sample? What's critical in the laboratory when receiving a spinal fluid sample is to handle it with urgency. And not just the technologists, it's the people that are actually receiving those samples into the lab, your specimen processors, delivery to the lab, and realizing that you can possibly save a life if you find something like amoeba in there and handling it with um, the utmost care. Yeah. Well, great work. Thank you so much. Thank you, much. Sheila Black. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Nice talking to you.